Hello, I've been preparing for a long time to do a series of somewhat technical topic and also role-playing assist type videos and today I got highly motivated because of something that happened to quickly put out a video on how to save a frozen mod set so that you don't get an update that ruins your save and so that you can always roll back to a previous version in the beta selection in Steam in order to make sure that you can continue playing anything that you start and don't get caught by an automatic Steam update that causes your save to fail. That, that happened to me literally today. If you know, you know. So this is my dirty bedroom, also known as my Crusader Kings launcher. We're going to go into our play sets here. We have this play set, which is for a series that I had intended to do. It is a return to my Kernu family in Cornwall. Um, it's going to be much more modded than the previous games in the series are, so I've had to do a lot of save, reset, mod freezing, and testing with this, and we're going to go through the whole process of all of that. Just what I do to try to make it so that a save see if a save will work with new mods, see if we can move it into the future before preparing to do more complicated things like save edits and other useful stuff. So you can see I already started with this. Uh, my Viet and my Rice are both updated. Um, my battle, um, Better Battles is updated. But there are a few things in here that I haven't done yet because we wanted to save them for this video. We're going to work with Community Flavor Pack here. And we're just going to go through the process of making a frozen version of the newest version of Community Flavor Pack. Now you, there are two ways to go about doing this. One is test first, one is test second. Now I have tested first. I do recommend testing first. The way we would test first is we would turn off all of our out-of-date mods like this. And then we would replace them from our uh, mod list with versions of them that are updated, like Community Flavor Pack. Ethnicities and Portraits Expanded. Some of these mods were in the original series and are required for the save to load at all. Uh, we also have Better Barbershop in here someplace. Of course, that would be alphabetically. There's Better Barbershop. Okay, with those now all selected, we're going to add them to the playlist. We also need our two compatibility patches, but let's just put things in their right order. And then we need our two compatibility patches. Uh, these probably don't need to be updated, so I might not have updated versions of them, but we'll we'll check. So we need... There is Community Flavor Pack and Ethnicities and Portraits Expanded compatibility patch right there. Then we have a second compatibility patch. There it is. Rice and uh, Ethnicities and Portraits Expanded compatibility patch. There we go. So we will add those two as well, and we will correct our mod order there and there. Make sure all the stuff that's been replaced is replaced, and then we will go and we will attempt to load the game in this state. So I'm going to go to my working save, which has already got some of the preliminary stuff that I'll end up showing you in a later video done with it, but... um. We're going to open it up here, see that it opens. We're going to run it for a little bit. I'm going to run it much shorter because I've already tested this, but we'll talk about what we run and what we check. A lot of times when you're adding mods to an existing file, it's important to check to see whether or not there are version compatibility problems, whether or not there are mod compatibility problems. This mod set is mostly just visual mods, but it does contain a few event mods as well. So here's our little friend. We're gonna go down through our long list of save games here. So we come down here to our save. This is our Prince Offa working. 
we're gonna load this. So this is in the intermediary stage. This has had no save edits made to it, but we have done setup. I will talk about setup, as I said before, in the same ish, same episode when I start doing um, save edits, but there is nothing edited in this save file. This is just all the stuff that we could do to set this save up in a normal save without having to do anything unusual. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom all the way out. Move things a little bit around. Take a look for anything weird we can see in fonts. And then we're gonna click on various people in various regions, letting the pop-in take place. And then seeing if people look like they make sense, if their um, cultural skin tones seem correct, if they're missing items, just generally, how does the world look? And if the world looks good, then it's probably good. That, that haircut is not the one that his mother had before. I just want to make sure that it's just a new haircut she didn't previously have and not uh, her having the wrong kind of haircut on it. So we've got that done. And now the next thing we want to do is want to check the menus, especially for the most recent update. Just make sure we get our tooltips as we expect to. Clicking on things works. Nothing is missing. Every place goes where every place should go. We're also going to check our... Um, where is it? Our legitimacy. So our legitimacy screen is coming up. It looks like everything's fine. We're going to turn on five speed and we're going to let it run. We're mostly just looking for smooth running, no problems. Right? Just letting time pass. Looking for crashes. Looking for difficulties. Looking for weird behavior we wouldn't expect to see. Not really playing the game. We're just letting the game be played. Let it go by itself. Whatever happens, happens. We just check various spots to see. I will not be threatened. This guy's gonna rebel against me. That's fine. This all looks pretty good. It all looks like the basic setup is finished. And it seems to be running fine. So what we want to do is we want to load the save that we were just using, and then we want to create a new hard save or a working save. The working save is going to refresh the save state for the game, bringing it up into the current version and correcting its problems with um, with mods and take away its warnings. This way we know the save that we use for editing when we get to the editing stage is as clean as possible. So that's our basic testing. We're in good state. I usually do the testing at the point where the save is just about ready to edit. Um, so anything I'm going to do in-game, I do with the mod set ready, but not with the edits done. And then once I've got everything working, I make a save. We're going to call this Prince Offa of Lotharingia. Ready to edit. Can't remember if this game allows those spaces, so we'll put the spaces in. We'll save it. After we save this, We'll just check the first save on the list should now be our ready to edit save. And it should be missing the um, the warning for mods, unexpected mod versions. There we go. So now missing the warning. This save was broken from the last time I played with this family. We are now ready to go back to the launcher. So here we are back in the launcher. Now that we know that our intended save file is going to work with this mod set, we go to our play set and we go down this list and every single one of these has to have a new mod made for it. We're going to move it into the file that already exists, but that's what I'm going to do. First, we're going to make a demonstration so you can see all of the steps. So imagine we didn't have 
this, Seaflave, it didn't exist. So we did not have a frozen version of the mod. We would go to our Steam updating version and we would open its folder. Like so. We also already have the mod folder open. We can see all the information from the mod is now in this folder. That's the updated version. And then we would go to our installed mods and we go to upload mod. You can also open the live version of the mods folder from in this menu as well, just in the same place. Just the three dots on the end show in folder. So we're going to upload mod. This is how you put a mod on the Steam Workshop. It's also how you start making your own mod so that it can be recognized by the game. We're going to click on create mod and we're going to call this got to call this something different, so we'll call it Seaflave 2. Version, this is the mod version, not the game version, but I tend to make it the game version just so I can remember. And we're just going to take this, and drop it in here, and it's going to make that folder for us. Then we're going to go down here to Utilities, and we're going to Create Mod. This is going to create both the mod file in the mod folder and the mod description file inside of the actual folder. So if we look, we should now have a mod file in here, cflave2. This file tells it where to find the mod, what versions are supported, and basically just basic stuff. It's how the game identifies that the mod exists, and we should have a folder up here. Still hasn't reset, which only has a descriptor in it. So we would take this folder and we would open up our folder from Steam, so our numbered Steam folder. We want to copy everything into there except the descriptor file. The descriptor file, we keep the one that was just made. Is that important? I don't actually think that it is, but we do it anyway. I don't think the descriptor file contains anything vital in it, but... It does need to be there. Yeah, nothing vital in it. It should match the uh, the mod file, though, in the other folder, so that's why we keep it. So now you can see we have populated this with all the folders from our updating Steam numbered version. We can close the Steam version and close this now. Okay, so I'm in post, and I thought I would talk about the descriptor file and explain things a little bit better, because I wasn't clear enough in the original go through the video. If you're using the descriptor file that comes from the updated mod, you need to change the name of the mod to the name of the folder here. If you're updating a frozen mod to a new version and you're keeping the old descriptor file that's in the frozen folder, you need to update the version here so that it matches the current version of the game. The reason for this is that this is going to get rid of that uh, annoying triangle that says that the version isn't good enough, isn't right. And if you use the new one but don't change the name, the descriptor won't match and it won't load properly. All right. That's descriptor files. If we go into our playlist, we can now add the new mod. So we'll add more mods, and we're going to grab this, Seaflave 2. Seaflave 2 is now exactly the same as Community Flavor Pack. So we remove Community Flavor Pack. We don't need it here at all anymore. We take Seaflave 2 up to where Seaflave is. We can remove Seaflave. And now we have a frozen version of this. This version is not visible to Steam and thus can't be upgraded over. We will then go through the process here of doing each one of these mods. We'll do a slightly shorter version of them so we won't bother to make a new mod. Instead, we'll go show in folder, show in folder. We want to move, always moving the Steam numbered version into the file version in your mod folder. So we'll grab everything in here except the descriptor. Replace it. Then we grab everything else in here except the descriptor. We would expect to see this overwrite because a lot of the file names and stuff are going to be the same. Just, just say yes to all overwrite. That's fine. 
that's fine. We're replacing everything. We close this. We close this. We want to go to, where is it? This here. Gonna get rid of you. And we would finish that process with all of the rest of these. So we would do the two comp patches and then everything should be ready, finish with better barbershop. And then we will have a save in a working state in the new version. I'm not gonna do it here, but it would be a good idea after you do what I just, all of these, to go in and load again because redundancy is good. It helps to make sure things happen the way you want it to. So once all of these are frozen, you know that Steam won't update over them and you can keep working with this mod set for as long as you want to play the save or you want to do other things in this version, like maybe you have a really good version of a specific mod you like and you want to keep playing it. This is another way to do that. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we're going to cover basic save editing and the other half of file preparation, which is doing everything in game that you can do before save editing. We talk about the most important rule of save editing, which is everything you can do without a save edit or a console command is better to do without it, unless it's disqualified. The primary disqualifier being console commands ruin save state, character switches ruin save state for achievements. So you only want to do those in games where your save state isn't important. Thank you for watching and I hope you join me the next time we are here exploring how to set up custom games for role plays in CK3. Bye for now.